Howdy Steelers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I built and painted this Western General Store. This kit came from Sarissa and it's part of their 15mm range but all the techniques I use in this video will be useful for any other scale as well. Also I'll list all the products that I use in the video description below. The Sarissa kits come as a sheet of pre-cut and scored MDF so the individual parts have to be punched out. Be careful though, as some of them have very small and delicate parts which may snap off if you are too heavy handed. Don't worry too much, you can always repair these easily, but it's best not to do it in the first place. Once you pop the parts, clean the small nubs of the MDF off the edges, as these may interfere with the build process later. The MDF kits are nice, but they are a little basic, so we need to add some rudimentary details to bring them to life. For this, I use a sharp knife to score the planks deeper than they have been lasered. Then I use the edge of the knife to score wood and grain across the planks. This doesn't have to be neat and the messier it is, is better really. Then it's time to build the kit. I dry fit the model before adding any glue, just so I know where stuff goes and to make sure that there are no issues in the final build. Here I am using super glue to seal the joints but you can use whatever you want. PVA is good as it sets solid, however it does take a while to cure and super glue sets quicker. I wanted to work on the model quickly, so this is why I was using super glue. The actual building is a little basic, not much more than a simple box, so as I said we're going to need to add some details. This is a pretty simple stage, so don't worry as it is easy to make the model pop with some coffee stirrers. I bought these off eBay, but you can get them for free in most coffee shops, not that I would condone that kind of behaviour. First things first, I split the stirrers down the long length. Obviously, make these as big or as small as you need depending on the scale that you're working at. Just be careful and try to make them neat, but not too neat as they're supposed to be hand cut lengths of timber. I want to add these to the edges, to cover the joints of the MDF and on the top for the roof. So I do this by placing them against the area I want them to cover, marking the length with a pen and cutting the plank down to size. Finally, I simply glue them into place. I then put a couple of cross beams for the sign above the shop and for the roof, I added a framework that would be used to hold the tar paper in place. And I can do the same with the front porch. You can add as much detail as you want here, such as door and window frames, but this is good enough for 15mm and it is certainly good enough for me. Now you could just paint the building as it is and leave it here, but I wanted to add a small yard to the structure, just to give it some interest and stop it looking like it had just been plonked down on the tabletop. So for this, I took an off-cut of plastic card that I had and measured out the footprints of the building along with some 3D printed fences that I got from Sabotaged. I marked the plastic card with a pen and then cut this down to size, trimming off the corners and rounding them down so they look less artificial. The next stage was to glue the building in place where I wanted it and adding the fences. I had to clip these down from their original lengths but this helps the ramshackle look I was going for. I also left a small space for an entrance through the back of the fence at the rear. The yard and exterior of the building needs some texture and for this I used sharp sand applied over painted on undiluted PVA glue. I just applied the glue with a biggish brush and sprinkled the sand over the top. You can see that I also added some railway model as ballast and cork pieces to look like different sized rocks and stones and also to give that texture just a little bit of interest. This was then left to dry overnight after which I used a clean brush to dry off the areas where the sand had got and shouldn't have been. With the sand and glue now dry it was time to undercoat the model. For this I used a rattle can of burnt umber. Brown is a good base coat as the building is wooden and we're working with the colour of the material from the get go. I did this outside but make sure to wear a mask or do it in a ventilated room. Get around the entire model and for this I'd fixed it to a small bottle with blue tack so I could get in under the overhangs on other parts of the buildings. Once the undercoat is completely dry, it's time for the fun stuff. I paint the wood in a series of layers of dry brushing. Using greys and light browns you can get a reasonable looking old treated wood colour. Remember that these buildings will be facing the harsh conditions of the old west, so the wood would really weather rather quickly from the sun, the wind, the rain or even blown sand and grit. I began with a heavy dry brush of Vallejo's green grey. Dipping an old and knackered brush into the paint I then wipe off as much as possible and pass the brush over the model going against the grain to pick up the score lines that we made earlier. And I'll do this with the fence as well. Then I use Art Deco Fawn and do another dry brush, but this time a little bit lighter than before. 
I concentrate on the edges of the building and the upper parts to give the structure a bit of lighter colour towards the top. This is a very light khaki colour and works well with the green grey as a wood colour. Whilst I have the fawn in my palette, I then go over the sand of the yard and the surrounding ground around the building. This can be a heavier dry brush than before, but it depends on what look you're going for. Using this colour will also bring the whole model together as one. Then finally, I dry brush the building in stone grey by Vallejo. Once again, this is a really high highlights. I like the top of the fences, the upper parts of the building. Make sure you go over all the surfaces getting heavier towards the top. This is subtle, but it will give you a light effect as though the sun is shining from above. Then I switch back to the yard and the floor surface with a dry brush of dark sand. Once again, this is just to pick out the highlights across the area and give it a bit of texture that is different, but similar to the building itself. I also give a heavier dry brush to the areas of heavy traffic, like around the doorway or the shortest path between the back door and the entrance in the fence. Then I paint the roofs in Vallejo's German grey to simulate the tar paper that would have been used as a waterproof covering. I make sure to keep this within the areas that are boxed off by the wooden planks used to hold it in place and I try not to get any paint on these. Whilst this dries I start the detailing work, beginning with the doors. You could leave these in their natural wood colour but I wanted to add a splash of colour here and there and just painted them in a light blue. Then I paint in the windows. For this I'm using flat black. Some people paint sky reflections in their windows, but I don't bother as the glass in the Old West wasn't particularly good, so it would look black from a distance anyway. However, if you want to add some colour, do so. The only weathering I do on the doors is a wash of Agrax Earthshade. This will get into the nooks and crannies and give the door a bit of a mucky look. You could highlight these once again afterwards, but I don't bother. Then it's time to turn my attention back to the yard. For this, I used a flurry wash sand and covered the entire area in the wash with a big brush. This is a clay wash, and although it goes on bright, it will dry in a nice sandy, dull colour that has a lot of texture to it. It also gets into all the places you may have missed previously with the paints. And then while I wait for this to dry, I go back to the roof and dry brush the tar paper with Vallejo's neutral grey. This is just a very quick, rough dry brush, and it just gives a little bit of texture to that flat surface. The building is 99% done now, but I wanted to add a few extra details such as the shop signs. This came from Sarissa and is part of a free PDF that they have on their website. I simply measured the size of the signboard and resized the sign correctly so it would fit nicely. I then cut it out, using PVA glue stuck it in place. Then I gave it a once over with watered down PVA. This will soften the paper and make it conform to the model a little bit more than the undiluted PVA. I did the same with some small signs and wanted posters just to add some interesting details. Then with all that in place and the flurry wash now dry, I went back with dark sand and gave the yard and floor surface a final dry brush, just once again to pick out highlights and add any areas of heavy traffic. Using another flurry wash, this time their grime wash, I began the final weathering of the model. For this, I used the wash in the nooks and crannies of the roof, where dirt and rainwater would naturally accumulate, and I just brush it on. I also use this wash to make streaks of rainwater and dirt down the walls. Simply draw your brush down in a straight line to achieve this. When the wash is dried and everything else is dry, I give the building a coat of Windsor & Newton Professionals Artist Matte Spray from a rattle can. This will seal the model, making it hard wearing and dull down the colours to a matte finish. And then it's just the final few details, and this involves adding a few grass tufts around the building. For these, I use parched ones to reflect the harsh environment of the west, and I also added a small plot of some kind of crop, just to give the building a lived-in look. And that's it. The building is complete. It is mostly a few stages of dry brushing with some small details added just to make it pop a little, but it didn't take longer than a few days to complete, including drying times. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to paint your own buildings for the Wild West. Let me know in the comments what you think and leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next Storm of Steel video.